two little timer modules from eBay, and initially they look very similar. The contacts, the, the displays and the relays, are, and the buttons are all in the same place, but this one uh, has a different processor from this one. And although they share the same sort of output contact arrangement from the relay, the, this one has the three input terminals and this one's got the two input terminals uh, just for power. And when you look at the back, it's kind of really... Uh, you suddenly realise that... I guess they've probably used this as a generic template for a sort of format for, you know, different timing functions, but the person who designed them doesn't really get it in terms of electrical separation because... They've used the relay, they've used modest spacing, I wouldn't say great spacing between adjacent tracks, they could have shuffled things a wee bit, they could have just rearranged things a little better. But the worst thing of all is that the uh, ground plane, and the ground plane is a sort of, it's a conductive metal plane that they flood onto the design. After they've put all the tracks down, they, they put a grounded metal plane around, that flows around them in the software. And it's normally used just to provide screening. And in this instance, they've treated the the ground plane has just treated the relay as just another component, and it's flooded really close round the uh, common terminal and come really close to that one, which is you know it, there's no reason for that. They should have actually shaped that well away from those terminals. Not just that, it would have been given the distance to other connections here and the vicinity of the um, the contacts to the coil, they could have actually put a wee anti-tracking slot around there and even one over here. They could have just made those smart modifications and it would have made it more suited to main switching, but I, I wouldn't switch mains with this. I don't trust the separation enough from the low voltage side to the main side, so I'd rule this as being a low voltage switching device. The other oddity, uh, there's a few oddities. On both of them, the relays have the snubber diode, the diode that's across the relay and just shunts the reverse transient when the transistor switches off. But this one's also got a metal oxide varistor, which looks like a typical mains rated type metal oxide varistor that they've just added in parallel with the relay as well, the relay coil. And it makes me wonder if they had problems with this crashing, maybe, during their development. I'm not sure why. Maybe the spike from the 12-volt side some, somehow finding its way to the 5-volt side as the coil turned off. It's, it's very odd. It just seems strange. But another thing that's strange is that they use opto-isolators to drive the relays. And we've got 12 volts coming in, and it goes through a 5-volt regulator here, or a wee 5-volt regulator up here in this one. And then, instead of just uh, doing what most people would do, the relay would be referenced to plus 12 volts, but because the, the negative is common to the um, 5 volts and the 12 volts, they would normally just have a transistor pulling the negative of the relay down to the uh, negative rail just to switch it on. It doesn't really matter that the uh, collector of the transistor would be at the 12 volts open circuit of this uh, relay. But normally they would just have a resistor and the uh, transistor and that's all that would be required. But here they've actually used an opto-isolator to drive the transistor. So the 12 volt side is opto-isolated from the 5 volt side for no obvious reason at all. And they've done it in both of them. Very odd. On the input of this one it's also got opto-isolation but again it's referenced to the negative rail. And... Uh, this thing will accept a trigger input of about anything about, above about 3 volts, basically the, the uh, point that enough current flows through this opto isolator to trigger it. But again, they could probably have just triggered the, on an input pin of the processor directly, given... Uh, I'm not sure why they did that, but uh, certainly even if you're taking it to 12 volts um, with reference to the ground, uh, it's got a resistor that will deal with that, uh, and you could uh, equally you could have used the resistor, the high value resistor, to the microcontroller. It's not usually an, an issue, so um, because the current and the input is quite low. But they've used an opto isolated input and they've used an opto isolated output, and that's what they've done. The software is quirky to say the least, particularly with the timer, which is uh, I'll show you that one afterwards. They're both timers, but uh, that particular one took me a while to suss out. So this one, uh, not super bright, I have to say, so I'll hold it up quite close. Basically speaking, if you were using maybe a coin mechanism, a good example of where you might use this one would be, this is an S10 coin mechanism, it's designed to fit in a frame and it hits a micro switch when the coin goes through. And if you had a game or an internet terminal or something that you wanted to 
control the time on, then you'd use something like this. And all that would happen is that when the coin went through, it hit a switch, which would bridge this uh, trigger wire to the um, positive, and it would start that counting down, the number of seconds programmed. And the relay energizes, the little blue light lights to show it's energized, and when it reaches uh, its um, programmed value, it just cuts off and that's it. And it, it goes into standby after that. And uh, when you send another trigger pulse, not sure, it just it, it detects it happening, but it doesn't re-trigger again. But when it gets to the end, it, it is ready for the next trigger pulse. To program this, it's a bit odd because um, this button here increments the counter the uh, the uh, digit, while this one uh, in moves the digit along, but there's no indication. They could have used the decimal points, or they could have flashed the display to show which was the active one that was being set. So now you have to just work out, well, that was the last digit being set. I've pressed that button, so now the middle of the digit will be set, and then you can set that to the appropriate set of time, and then move on and maybe set that one up to 14, and then, then it loops back to the first one, so you could set that to zero so it's once it's set it is you know it's set and forget once it's done it's it's finished but uh, it's a bit it would have been helpful with, with that little function to actually indicate which digit you were setting but that's it it's, it's basically in multiples of one second uh, it's it's the timer uh, i think there might be a function to put the display off in this um i'm not 100 sure if I hold this, yeah. If you hold this button down, the display goes off. It'll still time, but it doesn't actually show anything in the display until you hold this again, and then after a while it comes back. So that's there, that one. And then comes this little enigma down here with two buttons that tries to achieve quite a lot. This is what would be called a uh, either an asymmetric recycling timer to give it its official uh, industry name or a symmetric recycling timer. And basically speaking, it's got two time delays, and um, I'm gonna turn the light off here and uh, show you uh, this. Is this a good idea? Yeah, hold on. Righty-o. So it's got two buttons, uh, one on the right, one on the left, and this time, uh, when you press the left-hand button, well, for, first of all, you have to set if what you're working in, in the times. So. If you press the right hand button while it's actually counting down, whichever mode it's in, on or off, uh, it'll start counting down at a different rate. So that's uh, now the decimal points flashing and that's counting down in one second. Uh, it's flashing roughly one second, it's not that accurate. And the digit will count down at a rate of uh, one, um, uh, one, minute pulse, one minute cycles. So that's currently set for four minutes. If I press this right hand button again, it goes to tenths of a second mode. And that's actually showing the other side of the cycle too. And if I press it again, while it's in that mode, it'll switch to uh, one second. So you get tenth seconds, one second, and minute. And then when you go into the other side of the cycle, I'm going to have to change that because it's set for one second. When you go into the, one, the other section of the cycle, uh, for instance, uh, which it would be really hard because I'm going to have to catch this really quickly. I think it would be extremely foolish, so I'm not going to try it. While it's in the other half of the cycle, if you press that right-hand button, you could then select if that cycle is working on a tenth of a second, second, or minute. It gets a bit hairy. To set it, press the left-hand button. And the first digit, it shows you this is the on mode uh, by turning the relay on and lighting the blue LED. And then you can step along, and this time it is displaying the flashing digits. So I could set that to a one that one to zero. And then it will show the off cycle. So I'll set that to 15. And then it will go back into its timing mode. So at the moment it's in the one second mode, but while it's in that, I could, as I say, press this and it would go into the one minute steps or into the tenths of a second. And now it's gone to the other side of the mode, you know, it's the on cycle. I'd have to wait, if I wanted to change the other one, uh, I'd have to wait till it's in that and then grab it quickly, 
and set it to seconds again. But as it is, uh, once you've set it up like that, and it's not really intuitive, is it? I mean, you get used to it after a while. But it foxed me at first the fact that you could set a different timing range in tenths of a second, seconds or minutes on each half of the switching cycle, the on and off state. But uh, once you've set it up, I suppose, it does its job. Still a bit suspicious about all these suppression components. It makes me wonder how stable it's going to be if they've had problems with the uh, inductive spike from the relay causing problems with the microcontroller. But um, I suppose ultimately there's only one way to find that's to try it in an application. But uh, it's a useful little timer. But um, it does, you know, it programming it uh, takes a bit of uh, playing about. This is another one that if you press the button to hold it down, it will kill the display. Uh, just it'll put it out and it'll still operate in the background while it's uh, running but, uh, and then you can bring it back but uh, yeah, it's, it's an odd little thing very odd indeed